Okay, <clears throat> I'm here to uh, support those that have really smartphones <laughs> and are too ugly to be on Facebook. Okay, so along with what Jay has just has talked about, it's an amazing thing out there that we have this huge revenue stream running right by our door. And if you talk to a lot of people, you ask them about Trinidad, they say, yeah, we've driven through it. You didn't stop, did you? No. Gas, burger, and go. Okay. So, my proposal here, my idea, there's a couple things out there that are getting ready to happen and I think we can all uh, work on to really help promote and drag these people off the, the interstate, but I work from a theory, it's called the butt and bladder theory. Now, you all have cars that will go 500 miles on a tank of gas, but your butt and your bladder still can only go about three. So we're at a point, at this, right where we are at Crossroads, that we are 300, three hours from Albuquerque, Denver, Amarillo, any place else. So they're going to they're have to stop, okay? Well, instead of just stopping at a gas station, burger and go, why don't we put something out there that's going to really make them stop? Well, the other big thing that's going on, you have one and a half people per car. Well, that half a person is a dog. All right? So where's that dog going to go? He's got the same issues. He's got a butt and a bladder thing. He's got to go. So one of the things out there is that could be a great idea, and this is one of the things we're kind of talking with the La Puerta people, on how we're going to get people, we're going to have this really great, fantastic thing that's just off the highway. How are we going to get those people that come in there to start going up to Wayne's shop or you know downtown or you know, get on Jay's app or that kind of thing? Well, have a great place for them to stop and have a world-class dog park or cat park, or both park. We're, you know, we're not in an automation around here. Whatever it's going to take to get those folks off the interstate. And the other thing we got to think about too here, you know, when this Laporta thing gets going, how do we as a community want to represent ourselves in that, that process? Because it will draw people off. And how do we get them down the river walk? How do we get them up Commercial Street? How do we get them to all the historical sites and everything else? Some people like me can't download, I can hardly get a text. You know, so we've got to figure out what are we going to do physically that's going to add people to the downtown process. Because if we can get, let's say we can get 100,000 people and they get them to spend 150 bucks a piece, just imagine what that does to our economy. So one of the other things we're, we're going to do, or I think we should do as a community, is we start inviting people here from other places. You know, the Germans love history. How many guys are out spent some all expense paid vacation out after World War the uh, German prisoner of war camp. You know, all these kind of things that we got to think about. So if you know people that you can invite, invite them up. You know, Wayne, invite an art group up here just to, just to look at art and architecture. Joni's got an idea with the Trout Unlimited chapter that, uh, somebody's text me, it actually works. <laughs> with the Trout Unlimited chapter to send an invite to 5,000 Trout Unlimited members out of Austin, Texas, where the closest trout is 200 miles away. What are we going to do? We're going to have them stop in Trinidad first, fish our river, see our history, eat in our restaurants, buy their gas, buy their fishing licenses, all those things that they can do before they get into the rest of Colorado. Can't keep them here for a week, let's keep them here for two or three days. History buffs, invite history buffs. Anybody here that knows anything about history, we have a big Ludlow Day uh, festivities that are going to happen this year. Tremendous, tremendous opportunity to start inviting people to the community and show off what we got. But we got to be proud of what we're showing off. We got to have a community that's clean. We got to have a community where everybody's out there planting flowers. How many people have looked at all the old pictures of Trinidad, of downtown Commercial Street, or wherever else, and every one of the shopkeepers out there had two pieces of equipment? One was an apron, and the other one was a broom. They were all out there sweeping their own sidewalks. You know, we can't rely on the city all the time to do what we should be doing as business people in this community. You know, they should be picking out cigarette butts or beer cans out of the planter in front. We should be doing it because that's a direct reflection on my business. Put flowers out there, make it attractive. The more attractive the individual is, he can go through every app in the world and he can walk up and see an attractive building, an attractive store, I'll guarantee you he'll be in there and spend 15, 20, 30 minutes, a couple hundred bucks, who knows. I've been talking to uh, Tom Aker, and at the end of March, there's going to be a city cleanup day. We're going to get the city crews involved, and uh, I, would, I would be 
lead the volunteer groups, and, and we need everybody here to volunteer, and we don't know the date yet, but we're gonna just make a sweep down, down Main Street, probably First Street and, and, and Elm, and, uh, and clean things up. And so we need the schools involved, everybody in the town needs to show up. And uh, so we'll be publishing information about that. And this is before all the people from AAA pull off the highway to see what we've got. Right. Well, and those, this is part of the integration process that this whole thing is going to work out. As we look at our uh, funnel over here, we're now at that neck where everybody now is going to start talking to each other, which we now, thank goodness, will talk to each other. We can start acting together. you got a plan for that. You have another plan. Lipstick and Rouge might have a plan. Health Nicks may have a, a walk down the river. I mean, all these things that we can start putting together that draw people in, not only our own people, but people from outside the community. So all this stuff is starting to come together and meld, and the transparency with the government and the willing to help and everybody else. It's not just government, it's everybody involved. And that's, it's a great, it's, what do they say, it takes a village to raise a kid? Well, it probably takes a whole community to make a really cool planter box. So I think we all need to, to uh, pay attention to that. And everybody wanting to know where the money's coming from? $40,000? Laura DeBell has got it for you right here. What she just brought to me this evening was community grants, uh, State Farm Insurance is giving out 40, $25,000 grants. So these are the things that we can look at and go after. You know, how do, we, how do we apply that to what we're doing? Other things upstate that might be there. We're looking at uh, Go Colorado for doing some uh, grants for the Boulevard Edition. All those things that are out there is we have to think about, you know, where can we get the money to do that? And if we can't get the money, how can we do it ourselves? So, with that, Lou. Well, I think somebody's up here in front. So we're gonna have to talk.